This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by Video Guys, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for over 25 years. And by Boris FX, the leading developer of visual effects plugins, titling, motion tracking, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Assimilate Inc., makers of Scratch, the number one choice of professionals for complete dailies and larger than HD finishing workflows. Scratch, amazingly creative, incredibly fast. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're talking about working with 2-3 pulldown inside of Avid Media Composer. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, it's going to give you the ability to work with 1080i clips seamlessly inside of a 23976 frame per second timeline. All right, so as you can see, we are in Avid Media Composer. And before we get rolling, I do want to mention something that is very important. We are making a very important assumption here. And what that assumption is, is that the 1080i you know, clip sequence clips that we are working with was originally acquired in 23976. If your footage was originally acquired in 1080i, this process will not work the way that I'm going to show it to you because we are doing basically a reverse telecine to this. All right. So keep that in mind. So this footage, beautiful, looks like it was originally shot in 23976. That's why when I got these 1080i clips and I brought them in, I knew that I could do some work with them to get them back to the way that they looked originally inside of my 23976 frame per second timeline. Now, if I come back to the beginning of the timeline, you'll notice that when I took the clip and I dropped it into a timeline, two things have happened here. One, the clip has been identified as being 29.97 frames per second. And second of all, a temporal adapter has been added to my clip. Now, if for some reason you don't see the temporal adapter, if you navigate down here to the fast menu, you'll see show adapters. If I have it set to none, you'll just see a little green dot on your footage. But I normally show the adapters because to be quite honest, they're annoying, they're in my face, and they tell me that something's going on. Now, if I come back and hit play, you'll see very stuttery, very shuddery, exactly not what we want. Now, if I pause this and I come back to here, that's where you're going to start to see everything doubled up. So you can see that the 2 3 pull down that's being added, well, to be honest, is actually not happening at all, and it's really not correct. So, how do I get in and actually do this technique? Well, let me show you. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate up to tools. I'm going to come down to the motion effects editor. Now, the other way to get quick access to it, if you are in your timeline parked over the clip that has the temporal adapter, is simply try to step into effects mode. Once you do, the motion effects editor will appear. So now what we need to do is to tell the motion effects adapter what we want to do. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that this technique will work almost exactly the same for any 1080i clip that was originally acquired at 23976. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to promote this clip. Now you'll notice that as soon as I do that, the adapter disappears. and We now have the little motion effect icon over top of our clip. Now it hasn't really done anything. If I come back here and hit play, you'll see everything kind of looks the same. It's still shuttery and everything's doubled up as far as the fields go. In this case, fields, but keep in mind they're being played over top of frames. So what we're going to do is we're first of all going to tell Media Composer that no, these aren't blended interpolated frames. What these are is actual both fields being looked at as a single frame. Now, of course, because of upper field, lower field being trying to be combined together across these frames, it actually kind of looks a little bit worse now. But that's because we haven't actually gone through the process of adding the 2-3 pull down to get things back the way it was before. So because this footage and our source is actually filmed with 2-3 pulldown, I'm going to select that. Now we can come through all the different pulldown cadences and try to select the one that we want, or I can have Media Composer attempt to guess it. Now to be honest, I normally have Media Composer attempt to guess it instead of going through each one, you know, uh, option by option. I simply say detect. Now as soon as I do that, you're going to notice that the grass now looks correct. Now take a look at what happens when I go through frame by frame. Everything's looking good. Okay, so what I'm going to do, before I play this out, is I'm actually going to take the same clip here, let's take this one, and I'm going to add it right over top. Then what I'm going to do is we're going to call up our 3D warp. We're going to apply it to the topmost layer. And then I'm simply going to step into our crop. 
And let's make sure we crop this halfway just so you can see exactly what's going on with the before and after. So if I come back now and you take a look, if you take a look at the left side, not looking very good. The right side looks super smooth. Now, perfectly, perfect examples when I pause on it. Take a look now at the left. Take a look at the right. The right is looking exactly the way that it should with all this weird fielding going on on the left because we haven't interpreted that footage properly. So if we take a look at our final master clip now and I hit play, it looks exactly the way the original clip did at 2398 in our timeline. Now keep in mind, this is still the 1080i clip. All I did was I linked to it, I consolidated it, and now it's in our timeline essentially just like it would have been if it was originally native 23976. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that this technique will work exactly the same. And I've picked a few shots with motion here. Perfect. You can see that the golf flag not looking very good there. But again, the same technique applies. Let's drop it in. Let's head back into the motion effects editor. Promote both fields. Film with 2-3 pull down. Detect. You'll see over here it's looking very nice. If I come back now and I hit play, that looks exactly the way that I want it to look. Now, let's take this concept one step further. We've been dealing with this on a clip-by-clip -clip basis, which is fine if you're dealing with stock footage or anything like that. But what about a situation where you're going to get in and actually have a sequence of clips? So here's where things get a little bit tricky and things can kind of fall off the rails a little bit. I'm going to take this clip with a bunch of clips in it. Okay, we're just going to line it up, drop it in, boom. Now, you'll see again, we have the same problem. We got that weird fieldy, shuttery background. Again, this technique doesn't change. Shift and Y, promote, both fields. Film with two, three, pull down, and detect. Now, what's important to keep in mind is the cadence with all those shots. I think there's four of them in here is the same. So if I now come back and I hit play, first shot looks perfect. Now, where things get tricky is on the edit. The edit looked perfect. This shot looks fine. Boom, again, perfect edit. And last but certainly not least, we've got our last, I'll call it a perfect edit right there. So basically what we've done is taken these four clips that were part of one master clip, and we've now converted them back to 23976. Now, here's where things can fall off the rail a little bit. What I've now done is I've taken a clip, it's the exact same shots, but what I've done is I've taken each clip and I've rendered it out of After Effects with a different cadence for each clip. So let me show you how this is going to work. I'm going to drop this into its own timeline. Again, technique is exactly the same. Promote, both fields, film with 2-3, and detect. Now you'll see that this shot seems to have lined itself up okay. However, take a look at what's happening here. Because the cadence is different on each one of the shots, what would actually have to happen now is I'd have to add an edit here. I would come back to the start of this shot here like such, and I would then add another edit, and I would switch the pull down type. Let's just pick the first one here. That's actually looking pretty good. Nope, not quite right. You'll see it's a little bit on the shuttery side. So let's jump down to here, and it's a little bit of a guessing game as to figuring out exactly which one you're going to want to go with. Now, you'll see, again, with the first shot, if I come back, I hit play. This one's looking okay. This one, not quite, so I'd have to get in and monkey around with it. This one was okay. However, the last shot might need some monkeying as well, because like I said, these shots have different cadences. And now getting in and putting everything back the way that it was is going to require a little bit of work on your part. So that's something that's exceptionally important to keep in mind. In a lot of cases, when you're doing this technique, if you're doing it on a shot-by-shot -shot basis, and you know for an ironclad fact this footage came from 23976 source, you can get in and do the technique I showed you with every clip with absolutely no problem. If, however, you're bringing in a timeline, whether it's 30 seconds a minute or even a long, you know, stretch out over half an hour, once you add your 2-3 pull-down, you're going to want to verify every shot to make sure that every shot's cadence is correct so that this way when it gets played back you don't get any of those weird jaggedies that you get from fielded footage attempting to be converted to progressive. All right now as we're wrapping up I want to remind you to check out our sponsors Video Guys for all of your Avid software and hardware as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. 
And I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris Effects, makers of Continuum, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next Continuum purchase. And I want to round out this lesson by letting you know that the awesome team at Assimilate has given you a coupon code for 10% off a Scratch, Scratch VR, or Play Pro annual licenses using the coupon code of KPM Deal for you. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.